Um, Musk says the latest revelation serves as proof that, quote, the inmates were running the asylum before he took over the company. Well, joining us now to discuss all this is our company, senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, Carrie Sheffield, and columnist for townhall.com and Turning Point USA contributor, Aaron Elmore. Ladies, welcome to the show. Always good to have you, especially on a Friday. Aaron, I'll start with you. All right, so we know that Elon Musk came out today and he said that he's going to try to create a special feature that people would know when they're being shadow banned. I mean, this is what people have been hoping for all along because people will say, I've been suppressed, um, but but I, there's no way to prove it. And now hopefully there will be. I mean, is this the ultimate win? I mean, it's actually showing conservatives that we've been right all along. But the question is, is why is Twitter shadow banning anyone at all? This is supposed to be a public square where you just put out your information and people see it or they don't. So I really think that the idea of shadow banning is the antithesis of our First Amendment right here. And thank God we have Elon Musk who is exposing all of this because there were implications in the 2020 election and beyond. And the American people are finally seeing, wow, conservatives weren't crazy to think that we were being shadow banned because we were. Carrie, I think that's it, right? Because you would have so many conservatives say, this is happening to me, and people wouldn't believe them. They say, sure, 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 you're you're losing followers, or no one saw this, you're just making this all up. And now, this is like the justification that everyone was looking for. Political story coming out of Washington today was Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema leaving the Democratic Party, becoming independent. Real quick, I want to get both of you to just weigh in. What, what significance politically do you think that does have or doesn't, Aaron? It certainly doesn't hurt Republicans, although she said she would not caucus with Republicans. It does give us a bit more power. And we know that, you know, we didn't win the Senate, but this helps us in terms of the leanings. And if Joe Manchin just comes over to our side a little bit, things look a little better for the Republicans than we initially thought. Carrie, what about you? What do you think? I agree. I mean, it's a, a, another trend. It shows how hard left that the Democrat Party is going. And I think that, that for conservatives, that's where you, you win. You get people like Kirsten Sinema uh, and the, from the voting booth and say, this is people who want reasonable things. Uh, she has a lot of support in the business community. Quick, so uh, let me just ask you this and before. Yes or no, do you think that she wins re-election in 2024, Aaron? Yeah. Uh, Carrie? No. Yeah. Okay. I'm, Interesting. You're I'm on. on the, you're I'm on, on with her. Yeah. I'm on I say yes. I'm with. I mean, oh, you, Aaron. Okay. I do know so Carrie and me versus right you and Aaron. Aaron. Look what just happened. Yeah. Carrie I think you'll be happy. Yeah. Listen. I, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, time will tell. We will see. I hey, want to come uh, back to this conversation. Carrie, make sure we mark this down. <laughs> Same goes for you, Aaron. I will say, I want to get your guys' take on this before we let you go, because it's been a big controversy yesterday. The Biden administration exchanging Brittany Griner for um, the merchant of death, Victor Boot. Um, ultimately, now the White House is saying, hey, it was all or nothing. They said it was no deal or this, so we took the deal. I don't have a lot of time left, but Aaron, would you have taken the deal if you were in the same situation and left uh, Marine Ed Whalen behind? I just don't understand why we left a Marine behind for someone who did something illegal in this country just because she fits a certain narrative within the Biden administration. This is really sad, and it shows you how we feel about our members of our armed services. Moreover, now it just really sets a precedent that if you want to kidnap an American in exchange for one of your prisoners, makes it a lot easier. And it looks like this administration is willing to negotiate with terrorists. Mm. Carrie? Yeah, so Vladimir Putin about is five seconds. You know, Vladimir Putin is a judo champion. That's about using small amounts to get large pressure. There's a huge asymmetry in terms of the value of the prisoners that are exchanged here, the value of the danger now to U.S. citizens uh, that is from this. So I, this, it's, it's truly abhorrent, the power asymmetry that we're giving to Vladimir Putin. All right, I'm going to play Howie Mandel. I, to go, I want to get to Lindsay's question. Deal or no deal? Aaron Elmore, yes or no? Would you have taken the deal? No. Carrie, deal or no deal? No, push push for the Marines. Lindsay, deal or no, no, no. It's yes or no. We no are, deal. They no lost deal. Yeah, four no deals. No deal. All right, no deal. <laughs> but we do have a deal on you guys sticking around. Aaron and Carrie, please do that because Elon Musk was the 2021 Time Magazine Person of the Year. He was on the short list again for this year's distinction, but didn't get the top spot. That is a clue for the company quiz, which is next. Stay with us. 
All right, on this day in 1965, the animated special A Charlie Brown Christmas first aired on TV, becoming an instant classic. Speaking of classics, an unofficial recent survey found that the company Quiz was America's favorite <laughs> Christmas time trivia I think game. That's it accurate. is, yeah. yeah Back like to that. playing to take on Lizzie, Carrie Sheffield, and Aaron Elmore. All right, are you guys ready for this uh, holiday version? I'm ready, maybe. All right, question one. On Tuesday, incumbent Democratic uh, Senator Raphael Warnock defeated Herschel Walker in that Georgia Senate runoff. Warnock, in his victory speech, complained about voter suppression despite a record turnout. Well, in 1943, Georgia became the first state to lower the legal voting age in the st in state and local elections from 21 to 18. But which president was the first to publicly support a constitutional amendment lowering the minimum voting age. Remember, the key word there is to publicly support. A, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, B, Harry Truman, C, Dwight Eisenhower, or D, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Ooh. I can see Lindsay's up with a B real quick. We've got two A's. What we don't have is the right answer, which would be ah, C. That wow. would be Dwight Eisenhower, who in guess. his 1954 sport, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, beating out Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and last year's winner Elon Musk, as well as do-nothing Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, among a bunch of others. But who was the first person to win the Person of the Year? Albert Einstein, B, Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi, C, Charles Lindbergh, or D, Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Ooh, yeah. That's This is an interesting tough. one. I, uh, uh, I like it's two, so. You think it's two? Mm. This isn't the, two. like, this is a quiz, not a, like a, um, okay, we've got is an one A, of my a question, D. Oh, is one of these right? Okay, um, is you, one of you, these okay. right? No, I don't play that. <laughs> this is, this is a very serious game. <sighs> I'm going to go with this one. Huh? She Just, for fun. Just for fun. Person. <laughs> Just for fun, you chose the right one. Yes! Yes. Lindsay on the board oh! first. It was Charles Lindbergh. He won the title in 1927, although at the time it was called the Man of the Year. Lindsay up 100. <laughs> Yesterday we spoke to incoming Congressman Mike Lawler and Nick Lolata from uh, New York about the success Republicans had in the Empire State in the midterms. They picked up three House seats to help the party gain control of the House of Representatives and, by the way, in the process, defeat Democratic Campaign Committee Chairman Sean Patrick Maloney. Now, Frank Sinatra famously sang a song about New York saying, if I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. But Sinatra was not from New York. Where was old Blue Eyes born? A, Boston, B, New Jersey, C, Italy, or D, in Rhode Island? Oh, Blue Eyes. Now that I know why you were saying that song earlier, I mm -hmm. should have taken that as a hint. Well, you know, you've got a D. Uh, well, Lindsay didn't take the hint very well. Carrie Sheffield knows her uh, chairman of the board. He is from New Jersey, from Hoboken, in fact, and he will be 108 years old on December 12th. So the Army-Navy football teams face off in the rivalry that is annually played on the last weekend of the college football regular season. The Naval Academy football team is one of the oldest in the country, forming in 1879 as a way to keep midshipmen in shape. Tomorrow will be the 123rd time they face Army, but which school has Navy played the second most? A, Air Force, B, Boston College, C, Penn State or D, Notre Dame? Lindsay, up quick with this. This is where the sports reporter and her, I could be wrong. It's uh, one of two, I it's think. It's one of two. Well, you and Aaron definitely know your Navy football. Right. It is I Notre Dame. Right. They've played a total of 95 times every year since 1927. That player this week, we spoke to actor Scott Schwartz, who played Flick in the movie A Christmas Story about starring in the sequel of the classic movie 40 years later. Which of the following, though, is the highest grossing Christmas movie of all time? A, The Grinch, oh, B, e. Elf, C, The Polar Express, or D, Home Alone? All right, I, this is, you're putting me in a tough position, no, Sean. No, not. Yes, you are. No. Yep, 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 okay. I'd like to see some letters. Well, is it? Oh, well, is it a Christmas movie or a Christmas time movie? I'm just. You, that's what I actually nope, need to know. You, that's you, the question that's stands. Christmas time or Christmas? The movie. question stands. Knowing you. The question stands. Carrie, that's a D. Aaron, that's a C. I think a this very is nice the right C. Answer, though. And Lindsay is putting up. <laughs> 
two. Oh, what, what, how long? This is not your first time. It doesn't matter which one you put up. Both of the ones you put up are wrong. The yeah. answer is A, the no Grinch. Way. No the way. A, and You're by no the way, way. Yeah, the it grossed $512 million. That's and to get back to your point, you knew it couldn't be Home Alone because, because I have Christmas told you it's a, no, it's a Christmas movie. time movie. movie. If you watch the show, you know where I come down well, on Home Alone. Well, that's why I chose B. It's barely edging out miracle. Gary and Aaron with one. Good I job, Congratulations <laughs> as we do that. Ladies, have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Friday. You bet. <laughs>